I have a few more questions about uh, your work in the boy band, girl band genre. Mm -hmm. But when you first came to New York, where did you come straight from? Were you working in Florida at the time? I came from uh, Universal Studios. I had worked at Disney performing, and then I was performing at Universal Studios uh, at the Murder, She Wrote post-production show. Wow. And I played editor, an editor or an ADR person and different people that, that put together the episode of, of uh, uh, Murder, She Wrote. <clears throat> and so I did that and got a call uh, to come to interview at SNL from the green room of, of Universal Studios theme park. I'm always fascinated with people's first New York City apartments. What was your, what did you find for yourself as a, My as a first young one, New I kind of took the first one I saw because I thought it was cute, but the guy who was my real estate guy was um, sweating. It was winter, I think, and he was, <laughs> it was fa late fall, and he was sweating, and he was super intense, and he kept using the word sick as positive, which I did not know. I was not savvy to the word sick. So he would just to show me things and go, the kitchen at this place is sick. And I, I thought it was bad. And I was like, why is he so excited about showing me this terrible kitchen? And then he described this apartment, which you know was soon after I realized that all, all, of, um, all of real estate in New York descriptions are bull crap. And uh, so he, he would say, you know, uh, it has a pre-war kitchen, vintage pre-war kitchen with copper detailing. And I would picture this like, you know, weird tiling that was all from the 1800s of copper. And it was like a 90s gay man's kitchen <laughs> that was teal. And it had copper like smears of paint that looked like a total 80s video. And, um, and then it would say like garden window and you would look out and there was like, you know, half a diaper and a pigeon and then like one plant that was half dead. So that was my, my first place I lived and it was next to H&H &H Bagels, which mm. really was, I was like Pepe Le Pew going out every day <laughs> to the smell of hot, of hot bread and I still am. <laughs> you, um, you wrote a sketch uh, called uh, Seven Degrees Celsius. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a boy band. That's, uh, uh, this is Casper, that's James Vanderbeek. That was right? The Beak. The Beak. And um, you also got to write for NSYNC. Yeah, you know, I did that as a recurring uh, characters. Those four, uh, you know, Purnell, um, Jimmy Fallon, Horatio, and Catan, they were, I made a fake boy band. They had really weird facial hair, and Will was their manager and could only be 30, uh, 300 feet from <laughs> due to a court case and had, you know, tinted glasses, the whole, she <laughs> the whole shebang. And, um, and I would write the songs and everything. And then in sync was the music guest. And I think someone suggested, or I suggested, like they can be the guest boy band, fake boy band on there. So I wrote the song called Hold the Pickle, where they were fast food guys and they had McDonald's outfits on. And they were saying like, hold the pickle and do it up it big. And it was all about, uh, you know, being in love and hold, holding the pickle and all this. And it was very sexual. <laughs> and they couldn't come and rehearse it until the very last minute. And these guys took a while to learn things. <laughs> Wait, and they came the in. This crew? You're oh, telling me they weren't great was, at choreography? It was a little rough. It was like <laughs> teaching goats how to sing and dance at that point. Jimmy... Jimmy and Parnell were, they were all trying very hard, but sometimes they'd kind of be scattered off and I'd have to keep <laughs> getting them back. But um, NSYNC comes in and I hand them the, the you know, I say Xerox because I'm 96 years old and I handed them the, you know, the, the copies of the thing and they immediately like whisper to each other in a huddle and then they get out and do full four, four part harmony, just kicks, flips, like full dance number to it. Yeah, let's just do this. And, they do the whole thing, and I was just in complete awe. But that was really my exposure to the sort of boy group, girl group stuff a lot was when I was sort of parodying them. I have such a vivid memory of, um, of coming home on Sunday. You know, in Sundays after SNL, it's like you're really, you're really unpacking your feelings of, of failure or success and your two martinis at the after party. And, and I, was, I would just never leave the apartment that apartment with the sick, the sick kitchen. I would never leave. I would just order. I'd wake up at 2, order, carry out, and just stay in that co cocoon all day. And I turned on TRL at the time that was still on. And there were all these screaming girls because it was in sync. And I looked down. They showed down the, out the window. And it was 
all these girls, and it was hours after the show ended at SNL, and they had a giant banner that said, hold the pickle. <laughs> so that means all those little girls sat and painted poster paint in the middle of the night and, and made their mom go get poster paint at Dwayne Reed. <laughs> and they made this, and it was one of those first times at that show that I realized how immediate everything was, where it was like, oh, I, you know, this is really, truly uh, live. Well, Paula, thank you. <laughs> I realized I had no real big bang finisher for that, so I just thought I would connect with you as an audience and just be human. I'd be human and connect with you. Girls 5 Emma is streaming now on Peacock.